For years, we've watched SpaceX land mainly Falcon 9, but also Falcon Heavy boosters on drone ships. So much so that today, the process is not even considered a big deal to a lot of people because of how common it's become. However, it wasn't always like this, and in the time since SpaceX started operating these floating landing platforms, a lot has changed to improve the technology and make this process more viable. Between improved communication, the octagrabber, navigation system upgrades, and physical changes, the drone ships have been very busy. At the same time, both Falcon 9 and Heavy are launching more frequently than ever before. This combination is the backbone of current SpaceX reusability and helps the company cut down on costs and increase launch cadence. Even with over 100 drone ship landings to date, new missions utilizing these landing platforms like never before are planned to happen. Here I'll go more in depth into the evolution of SpaceX's drone ships, recent changes that affect their future, what to expect in the coming months, and more. Drone ships are a key component of SpaceX's objective to significantly lower the price of space launch services through the full and rapid reusability part of the rocket program. During any SpaceX launch, the company offers three options, depending on the launch requirements. Landing on land, landing at sea, or expending the first stage. In order of increased performance and cost. Any Falcon flights launched into geostationary orbit or exceeding escape velocity require landing at sea or expending the first stage. Less demanding launches from Florida can return to landing zones 1 and 2 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, while less demanding launches from California can return to landing zone 4. To put in perspective the importance of these floating landing platforms, around three-quarters of recovered Falcon boosters land at sea as of 2022. An Autonomous Spaceport Drone Ship, or ASDS, is an ocean-going vessel derived from a deck barge, outfitted with station-keeping engines and a large landing platform, and is autonomously positioned while preparing for a landing. Currently, SpaceX has three operational drone ships, including Just Read the Instructions 2, or JRTI, and a short fall of Gravitas, or ASOG operating in the Atlantic for launches from Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, and of course I still love you, operating in the Pacific for supporting missions from Vandenberg Space Force Base. In addition to these three drone ships that make up the SpaceX fleet, there's a fourth that hasn't operated since the very beginning. Almost a decade ago, in October 2014, SpaceX announced that they had contracted with a Louisiana shipyard to build a floating landing platform for reusable orbital launch vehicles. Early information indicated that the platform would carry an approximately 90 meter by 50 meter or 300 foot by 160 foot landing pad and would be capable of precision positioning so that the platform could hold its position for a launch vehicle landing. The first ever drone ship was completed and soon named Just Read the Instructions. The landing location for the first landing test was in the Atlantic, approximately 320 kilometers or 200 miles northeast of the launch location at Cape Canaveral and 266 kilometers or 165 miles southeast of Charleston, South Carolina. However, in January 2015, during repairs to the ship following the unsuccessful first test, Musk announced that they were creating a sister ship planned for West Coast launches to be named Of Course I Still Love You. The first Just Read the Instructions had two landing attempts, both of which were failures. It was eventually retired in May 2015 after approximately six months of service in the Atlantic Ocean, and its duties were assumed by Of Course I Still Love You. The former ASDS was modified by removing the wing extensions that had extended the barge surface and the equipment thrusters, cameras, and communication gear that had been added to refit it as a drone ship. These items were saved for future reuse. Years later, Elon Musk announced plans for an additional barge, a shortfall of Gravitas, to support East Coast operations, but the build of the drone ship was delayed, and instead JRTI was moved to the East Coast and began operations in June 2020. By now, Of Course I Still Love You has attempted 71 launches with a record of 63 successes and 8 failures. JRTI has had 51 successes and only a single failure, and ASOG has had 36 successes and not a single failure. Together, these three modern drone ships have around a 95% overall success rate, which has only gone up over time. Normally, a tug is used to bring the drone ship to its oceanic position, and a support ship stands by some distance away from the crewless landing platform. Following landing, technicians and engineers typically board the landing platform and secure the rocket's landing legs to lock the vehicle in place for transport back to port. The first stage is secured to the deck of the drone ship with steel hold downs welded onto the feet of the landing legs. In June 2017, Of Course I Still Love You started being deployed with a robot that drives under the rocket and grabs onto the hold down clamps. Starting with ASOG and JRTI after it, these drone ships will not need to use a tug to bring the platform to the Falcon 9 landing zone, as it will now be fully autonomous. Later, ASOG became the first drone ship that has an automatic identification system, or AIS tracker, 
followed by another AIS tracker for JRTI. This helps to track its voyage during recovery operations and especially when it becomes a fully autonomous drone ship. By June 2020, SpaceX had received the ability to use its own private automatic identification system Aids to Navigation, or ATON, to mark the temporary exclusion areas it uses during rocket launches from Cape Canaveral, Florida, the first such use of dynamic restricted area ever approved by the U.S. Coast Guard. As for recent drone ship operations, this month SpaceX submitted an application to the FCC for a permit to land two Falcon Heavy side boosters on two drone ships located downrange from Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A. Specifically, Falcon Heavy side boosters B1073 and B1076 are planning to land on two drone ships for the first time. While these landing platforms may look simple on the surface, they are extremely innovative and complex pieces of technology. They rely on precision positioning, originally slated to be within 3 meters or 9.8 feet even under storm conditions, using GPS position information and four diesel-powered azimuth thrusters. In addition to the autonomous operating mode, the ships may also be telerobotically controlled. The thrusters are hydraulic propulsion outdrive units with modular diesel hydraulic drive power units manufactured by Thrustmaster, a marine equipment manufacturer in Texas. The returning first stage must not only land within the confines of the deck surface, but must also deal with the ocean swells and GPS errors. SpaceX equips the ships with a variety of sensor and measurement technology to gather data on the booster returns and landing attempts, including commercial off-the-shelf GoPro cameras. While drone ships have and will continue to provide SpaceX both cost and time savings, ideally, the company lands boosters on land. This process takes out different variables that often delay launches and also saves money. Recently, with the AX-2 launch, we saw the first attempt by the company to land a Falcon 9 booster during a crewed mission on land rather than a drone ship. To do this, they use some of the margin left over to return to the launch pad. In the future, we can expect even more missions like this. At the same time, there will practically always be a place for drone ships on missions where the booster will not have the opportunity to get back to land, even if it used every ounce of propellant. Focusing on the future, SpaceX might not be the only company using drone ships. Last year, reports came out that Blue Origin will use the same contractor as SpaceX did to modify a large drone ship for landing its New Glenn rocket's first stage. This comes after the company scrapped its large cargo ship, which was the original plan. Instead, we might see more drone ships that look very similar to SpaceX's. SpaceX has been using drone ships for years now with impressive results. As more and more Falcon 9 and heavy rockets get scheduled to lift off, the drone ships are expected to play an even more important role. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.